today we're doing 11.2 translations as well as 11.3 rotations. Our ICANN statements for today, I can identify translations and reflections. I can translate and reflect figures in the coordinate plane. All right, so our first type of problem here is um, identifying if something is a translation. Trans, that has that root trans in it, which means across. So a translation slides across a straight line without turning. So if I took this blue triangle here and I slid it across horizontally or I slid it down vertically, or even if I slid it across on the diagonal, those are all examples of a translation. Um, it's a transfer type of transformation. The shape stays exactly the same. It's just moved to a new position in that coordinate plane. So the first type of problem here is just identifying if something is a translation. So the directions say tell whether the blue figure is a translation of the red figure. So if we take a look at A, the answer here is going to be yes. Same shape and same position. Didn't say to explain, so I'm just going to write yes here. B, the answer is no. Again, it doesn't say to explain, but I'm going to go ahead and write an explanation for this one. This is a rotation, that the shape isn't in the same position anymore. So pause the video for a minute and try these next three problems. Okay, let's see if your answers are correct. For number one, the answer is no. This is what's called a dilation. The shape gets bigger. You probably wrote something like it's smaller or larger, which is fine. Um, the size changes. We'll look at dilations later on in this chapter. Second one, that one is also no. It is a reflection. Looks like that shape has been flipped over. And then number three, that one is a yes. Same shape, same position. On these ones, you got to make sure that you're paying attention to whether or not the directions say to explain. If so, make sure you have an explanation. All right. The next type of problem is working on translations in the coordinate plane. So for these, if you look at that picture there, we have the red triangle that's marked A, B, and C. And then we have the um, blue triangle there, and that is the translation of the original one. You know that's a translation because there's a little apostrophe after A, B, and C. Um, that tells us it's the copy of point A, copy of point B, and copy of point C. In a translation, the original figure and its image are congruent, same size, same shape. So for this one, it says translate the red triangle three units right and three units down. What are the coordinates of the image? So they went ahead and drew it for you. Um, they show you the first triangle, and then they show how they counted three units to the right and three units down for each one. So now all I have to do, since they did the picture for me, is to write my new ordered pairs. Remember the X coordinate side to side, that goes first, and then your Y coordinate up and down, that goes second. So um, for the copy of A, it looks like that one is at one, negative two. For the copy of B, that looks like that is at 5, um, 2. 5, 2 is where that point is. And for the copy of C, that looks like that is at 4, negative 1. This is a type of problem that you will have to use graph paper for. All right, so if you look at this next one, it says, what if the red triangle is translated 4 units left and 2 units up? What are the coordinates of the image? So there are a couple different ways to do this if you don't have a picture. One is to um, draw a picture and then actually count four units left and two units up. But you can also use addition and subtraction to help you with this for translation. So four units left mean we are going to subtract four units from our x value. And two units up means we are going to be adding two units on our y value. The reason we are subtracting for four units left, if we go back to the last slide here and you look at the coordinate plane, 
when you go left on a coordinate plane, um, that's telling us that it's a negative movement. I'm going to draw that on here. That is a negative direction. Um, and up and to the right, those are positive directions. So if I'm going in a negative direction, it's like subtracting that amount. So my original point for A, let's see, I think I'm going to write them up here at the top. The original point for A looks like it was at negative 2, um, positive 1. Actually, I'm going to write them over here. So my original A was negative 2, positive 1. My original B, let's go back and look. So the original for B is at um, 2, 5. Okay. And then for C, the original value for that was for, um, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. The original copy for, uh, the original order pair for C is at 1, 2. One, two. All right, so now I'm going to use my pattern, which is subtracting 4 from the x and adding 2 for the y. So my x value comes first. Remember x and then y. So negative 2, if I subtract 4 to my x, so negative 2, that's like boom, boom, plus negative 4. That means my second copy of A, I'm putting two apostrophes here because it's a second from this copy of A. Um, is going to be at negative 6. And then I said I was going to add a positive 2 to my y. So 1 plus 2, that's going to give me the value of 3. For the second copy of b, so the second time we move to b, if I subtract 4, 2 minus 4, or 2 plus negative 4, that's going to be negative 2. And then I'm going to do 5 plus 2 for my y, that's going to be 7. And then for the second copy of C, if I subtract 4, 1 minus 4, or 1 plus negative 4, that's going to give me negative 3. And then I'm adding 2 to my Y value, 2 plus 2 is 4. So my new ordered pair here, I have the second copy of A at negative 6, 3, the second copy of B at negative 2, 7, and the second copy of C at negative 3, 4. All right, so for our next problem here. It says the vertices of a square are, and they list them out for us, draw the figure and its image after a translation four units left and six units up. So the first thing I have to do for this one is to go ahead and actually draw the original image on the coordinate plane. So A is at 1, negative 2. You're going to plot it on here and you're going to label it. Now on the smart board it's a little hard for me to plot things perfectly. So um, just bear in mind that my numbers might be just ever so slightly off my points, um, but I will do my best here. So B is at 3, negative 2, C is at 3, negative 4, and D is at 1, negative 4. So here's my original one. I did it in blue. Okay, so I have my square. Now I need to draw the figure and its image after a translation four units left and six units up. So uh, for each one, I can go ahead and count. I'm going to switch colors here. And I can count up four, or I'm sorry, um, count over four to the left and six units up. Or I could subtract four um, and add six to my x and y's if I wanted to. So I'll start at A. So going four units left, one, two, three, four. And then six units up, one, two, three, four, five, six. That gives me my copy here. Now, I could do the same thing for B, count 4 to the left and 4 up. But I like to take a look at where my A is and use that to find my other points pretty quickly. So in my original, I can see B is 2 units to the right. So I'm going to do the same thing here, 2 units to the right. C is 2 units down for B, so there's my C. And then D is 2 units to the left from the C point. And there you go, there's my new image. Sometimes they will ask you to list the order pairs for this particular one. They did not ask me to do that. Okay, so I'm going to skip. This is actually the activity, so I'm going to pause for a second and find the, the note part. Okay, here we go. So the second half of this lesson, this is really the 11.3 part, is the reflection piece. So reflection means that the image flips across a line of reflection. And almost always, at least in this book, 
the lines of reflection you'll see are either the x-axis or the y-axis. The x-axis being this horizontal one, I'll label it x, and the y being the vertical one, I'll label it here y. So um, the green shape, the green trapezoid that is reflected across the x-axis, both shapes are about one square away on the bottom and on the top here with the way they're the same distance apart from that line of reflection. Same thing for the blue um, rhombus or blue parallelogram. Um, they are both about the same um, space away from that line of reflection. Reflections do give us congruent figures. It's a different type of transformation. So for our first type of problem here, it says tell whether the blue figure is a reflection of the red figure. So we're looking for a yes or a no, and if it says explain, you have to explain. So for A, yes, that is a reflection. Same shape, clicked over the line. And then B, no, that one's actually a translation. They show you a line there, but the shape has been slid across. It hasn't been flipped over the line. All right, pause the video for a second and try these next three problems. Okay, let's check to see if your answer is right. Number one is no, it's a translation. It's being slid across. Number two is also no, it's also a translation. All right, and then number three is yes, it's flipped across the line. Okay, so our key idea reflections in the coordinate plane, if we are reflecting in the x-axis, we're taking the opposite of the y-coordinate. And then the opposite is true for um, the y-axis, if we're reflecting it in the y-axis, we're taking the opposite of the coordinate. And they show you there beneath that part um, the algebra. So if we're starting with the point x, y, and we're reflecting in the x-axis, um, the y part's changing. That's because when we're reflecting it in the y, or I'm sorry, in the x-axis, the x part is staying the same. Just like on the y-axis, when we reflect in the y-axis, the y is staying the same, and it's the x that's the opposite. So they show you there two different reflections um, for that original shape in red, the ABC. Um, the first one is reflection in the um, x-axis. That's the one in blue, the copy of A, copy of B, copy of C. And then the second one is a reflection in the y-axis. That's the green shape with the second copy of A, B, and C there in green. Okay, so um, for this one, it says the vertices of a triangle are, and they list them, draw the for figure and its reflection in the x-axis. What are the coordinates of the ends? So in this one, they aren't asking you to actually list the coordinates after you do the picture. So we'll start by actually graphing on our graph paper. So A is negative 1, 1. So I'll find it. I'm going to label it. B is negative 1, 3. And then C is 6, 3. So here's my original image. Okay, now I need to reflect in the x-axis. So here's my x-axis. I'm just going to outline it so it stands out to you. A couple ways to do it. So um, one way to do it is count how far above and then make it that far below. So for example, on A, it's one unit above the x-axis. So I can go one unit below the x-axis and put my point there. So the copy of A, I just made that point at negative one, negative one. Then I can do the same thing for B. So B is one, two, three units up. So I'm staying on that same line of negative one in my X, but now I'm gonna go three units down. So one, two, three, that would put my copy of B right here. Don't forget those apostrophes, it's a little hard to see mine there. And then C, I'm three units above the x-axis, so now I'm going to go three units below. Copy of C. Make my shape. It should look like that, that it's flipped over across the line. Um, and I don't want to forget about listing up my other coordinates. So copy of B, my um, point, let's see, I had negative one, negative three. And then my copy of C was at six, 
negative 3. You can also take a look at those original ordered pairs. The x value is staying the same, and the y value becomes the opposite. OK, so on this one, this time, same type of problem, except we're going to draw the figure and its reflection in the y-axis. They are not asking us to list the coordinates this time, so we won't bother doing the listing out part. So I have a quadrilateral. P is at negative 2, positive 5. So here's P. Um, Q is at negative 1, negative 1. Um, R is at negative 4, positive 2. And then um, S is negative 4, positive 4. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect that quadrilateral here. This time I'm reflecting on the y-axis. So here's my y-axis. I'm flipping it across. So I can think that my y values are the same and my x values are becoming the opposite. Or I can just count how far um, for each unit. So I'm going to start with P here. If I go up to 5 on my y-axis, it looks like I've got two units to the left. So now I'm going to go two units to the right. I'm going to mark that as a copy of P. For S, I'm going four units to the left. So now I'm going to go four units to the right. I'm going to mark that S, copy of S. R at the point 2 on the y-axis. It looks like I'm four units to the left. So now I'm going to go four units to the right. I'm going to mark that my copy of R. And then for Q, I went one unit to the left, so now I'm going to do one unit to the right. And then I'm going to connect those points. And you can see my reflection of my original figure. All right, so take a look at this last problem, the vertices of the rectangle, and they list it. Draw the figure and its reflection in the x-axis. And B, try its figure and its reflection in the y-axis. Go ahead and grab a piece of paper, pause this, try this problem. Okay, let's go ahead and check to see if you did this correctly. So the first thing I need to do is draw the figure and its reflection in the x-axis. So I've got to plot my original point. A, negative 4, negative 3 would be right here. B is negative 4, negative 1. C is negative 1, negative 1. And D is negative 1, negative 3. Here's my rectangle. And for A, we're drawing the figure, which we just did, and it's reflection in the x-axis. So we're reflecting across the x-axis here. So B was one unit down. I'm now going to go one unit up. Make sure you put those apostrophes, copy of B. A was three units down. I'm now going to go three units up, copy of A. D was three units down. I'm now going three units up, copy of D. And then C was one unit down. I'm now going one up, copy of C. So here's um, my picture for part A. For part B, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here. It's same figure, so I don't need, really need to redraw it. But this time I'm reflecting on the y-axis. So this one right here, that's our y-axis. Um, and now I'm going to reflect across it. So Point C, I'll start with that one. It's one unit to the left, so now I'm going to go one unit to the right. This time I'm putting two apostrophes after it. It's my second time I've copied point C. C was four units to the left. Now it will be four units to the right. D was one unit to the left. Now it's one unit to the right. A was four units to the left. Now it's four units to the right. Okay, double apostrophes on all of these. Okay, and then we are connected and we're done. All right, so our last one here. The vertices of a triangle are, and they list them here, draw the figure and its image after a translation one unit left and two units up. So this is a translation one, not a reflection one. Go ahead and pause the video, try it on your own. Okay, let's see if you were right. So A, negative 2, negative 2, here it goes. B is 0, 2. C is 3, 0. And so now I'm going to connect them. I'm going to form my triangle. Okay, and then I need to uh, find its image after a translation one unit left and two units up. And switch colors here. So translation one unit left, I'm going to start with A. So I go one to the left. I go two up. I make my new point. Make sure you put those apostrophes, copy of A. 
All right, B was zero too. So now I'm going one to the left and I'm going two up. Here's my copy of C. And for C, three, zero. So I'm starting at three, zero. I'm going one unit left. I am going two units up. I am connecting these in red. Your new triangle should look exactly like your original triangle.